Lord Lumber. Thanks, Chair. Um, thanks for joining us, Mr. Meekin. Um, I just want to I put a couple of very quick questions to ASIO last <coughs> night um, on the SIM card encryption keys hack that has been in press since last Friday. Uh, Mr. Lewis wasn't sure who the lead agency was, but your name came up. So I'd just like to put a couple of questions to you now. Um, firstly, are you aware of the issue that I'm referring to, the compromising of a Dutch SIM card manufacturer's encryption keys? Uh, Senator uh, Steve Meekin, Deputy Secretary, Intelligence and Security. Uh, no, I'm not aware of the detail of that. Are you aware of the broad outlines? Uh, no, I'm not. Really? Okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, so have you been asked to provide a brief to anybody, either in government or in industry? I have not. Okay, thank you. Do you know whether um, ASD, anybody in ASD has been asked to provide a brief? I'm not aware that they have, but we can take that on notice. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, do you know who, it sounds as though it's not ASD, but maybe if you could just confirm for me um, who the lead agency is, if any, within the Australian government providing advice within government on this issue? On, 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 and precisely what is the issue, Senator? Um, so, Mr Richardson, it's a story that broke on Friday that Telstra, Optus and um, Vodafone are busy trying to verify the truth or otherwise, that uh, United States and British signals intelligence agencies stole <coughs> encryption keys for uh, mobile phone devices, potentially passports, credit cards, from a Dutch SIM card manufacturer, um, Gemalto, which produces around two billion SIM cards a year. Now, this potentially affects and compromises devices carried by millions of Australians, including presumably people in this room. I would have thought that would be something that ASD would be interested in if, or at least aware of. Uh, if the... Um if the allegation is that uh, the uh, uh, that the UK counterpart of ASD stole uh, the keys, if there were questions within our government, uh, that would normally come to ASD. Yeah. Okay. That is indeed the allegation, not just DCHQ, but GCHQ in partnership with the US NSA. So yeah, I, that's why I've asked yeah. ASD to come forward. But now I'm hearing, which I'm actually a bit surprised about, that you have no idea what I'm talking about. And that is a bit confusing to me. Uh, not you, Mr Richardson. I know you're extremely busy, um, but Mr Meekin doesn't know anything about the issue. I'm aware of media, of media articles broadly, but uh, we're not, uh, not involved in any detail. Okay. Is this some... Um, not something that would have come across ASD's desk, the potential compromising of the mobile phone handsets of millions of Australians, diplomats, justices, members of parliament, members of the ADF, your own staff, not something that you thought to follow up? ASD uh, yep. would, uh, uh, well, ASD could be aware of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not aware of one, I'm not aware whether the report is accurate. That's uh, what I'm trying to ascertain. Yeah, I thought you guys I'm, would be an excellent source of One, I'm not aware of whether, on whether the report is accurate. Yep. And uh, secondly, uh, we would have to take on notice uh, what we uh, know or don't know. Great. I might run through a couple of questions then to give some specifics to what I would sure. be asking you to take on notice. And I'm noticing, Mr. Richardson, you're stepping in. Would you rather that they go that I go through you or through oh, Mr. No, Meekin? Oh, no, no, uh, ask them. I mean, it's possible uh, Mr. Meekin may well have the answers that I don't. But, yep, uh, OK. Let me just step through these, and you can tell me if you know anything at the moment or if you're able to take some of this material on notice. The principal question was, is Australia doing anything about <coughs> this? Um, or who should I go and talk to? Do you think this is a consumer issue I should put to the ACCC? Well, uh, first of all, uh, first of all, it would be necessary to uh, ascertain whether the reports are accurate right, or not. Right, which you guys would be actually quite well placed to do. I don't have the phone number for anybody at GCHQ. Mr Meekin possibly does. Uh, well, I don't think uh, CGHQ, I don't think, would, would publicly comment 
on such an allegation. No, indeed. So how, how should we, how are ordinary Australians whose mobile phones may have been compromised by overseas intelligence agencies, how are they best placed uh, to ascertain whether these stories are true or not? Uh, well, uh, I think the best thing you could probably do is uh, put the question on notice and uh, we'll see what answer we're able to provide. Great, okay, let's work through them then. So uh, my first question is, sure, thanks, um, Chair. My first question is, uh, are you able to identify whether these allegations are true? Uh, the company Gamalto has made some claims that they don't believe their systems were compromised. There is some room for ambiguity, so anything you can provide us with that would help us to verify that or not. What is your advice? to Australian users of telecommunication services who may not want to use uh, devices that are compromised by overseas intelligence agencies, whether the Australian government plans to do anything, whether within this building, the defence community, the community more broadly, our dis diplomatic services, um, and whether your response would have been different, perhaps a sense of urgency if Chinese or Russian intelligence services were alleged to have compromised potentially every mobile handset in the country. That seems like a reasonable place to start. Would either of you like to provide any comment no, on we'll, the scope? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take that on notice, all of that. And in, in terms of your last, I'll be very open. In terms of your last uh, question, of course, of course we'd be, <coughs> um, there'd be a greater sense of urgency if you want, for obvious reasons. That's quite telling though, isn't it? Uh, no, yes, it is. It's quite telling in terms of in terms of this country's commitment to democracy. It's quite telling in terms of this country's commitment to values, and it's, it's it goes to a range of matters on which people might have a disagreement. But yeah. um, uh, I, I th the general proposition you put in terms of whether one might be more concerned in respect of one than the other, yeah. uh, I think. I think you'd have to be honest and say the answer to that question is yes. Well, your honesty is greatly appreciated. How much uh, oversight do we have as to what these allied intelligence services, recognising that you guys are operating on the basis of allegations that you haven't verified, um, how much oversight do we have as to what they do with this information? And do you use an encrypted phone, Mr Richardson? Uh, no, I don't. Right, okay. Do you use a commercial, I'm not asking you to name names, but do you use a commercial telecommunications yep, provider? Yep, yep. So this might be a SIM card in your phone or mine. Does this, does this alarm you at all? No. No? No. Why is that? Well, because I don't particularly deal with people who, if anyone wants to listen to my telephone calls, they can. Uh, you are very... I'd be surprised if they do, but oh, I, I don't particularly oh, have, <laughs> have, have conversations which I'm particularly worried about. <laughs> so it's okay if foreign spooks have hacked every mobile handset in the country because you don't have anything in particular? It, it, is, it is possible some might try to. It's possible some just have, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's possible. Can you, anything you, that either of you gentlemen are able to do to verify this story uh, would be extremely valuable. I'll put the rest of my questions on notice, um, Chair. Thanks, Senator London. I appreciate that. 